When we went to bed last night, we were expecting rain today. The forecast is said so. But then waking up with blue skies, sun is up. And when I checked the forecast again, it says that it's going to be sunny all day. So yeah, it's a good start of the day. Good morning. <laughs> We are on our way to Sintra. I think most of the people that we spoke to highly recommend that you know we go to Sintra. So yeah, we decided to go on a day tour, check out the palaces, oh Sintra itself, and then I think we're gonna be exploring it in a jeep. So it's either gonna be so good or it's gonna be <laughs> catastrophe. <laughs> so we'll see. We were in this square the other day when it was raining and full of people and it was, it was not, not nice but today early in the morning the sun is out it looks a bit different nicer <laughs> look at that it's just nicer without so many people well that's the train station I think one of the things I noticed in Portugal is that their train stations are always looking good. Um, look at that. It looks like a government building, a very important government building. But, uh, you know, it's a train station. I suppose train stations are government buildings. There you go. So we just go. Why are you going there? Oh, okay. Just before heading to our actual tour, we decided to stop at a, a very local place. <laughs> it's called Portela de Centra. And um, we went to a cafe where, you know, everyone there, everyone is local apart from us. And um, it's very cheap. It's like we had to pastel di nata and two americanos for three three euros you can't get that anywhere else and um yeah the town is quite it's quite nice we went our way to to meet our, our guide and um it should be here it should be i think it's in that road so let's go after meeting our guide we joined the rest of the group in a jeep these are the people i live in central <laughs> Our first stop is Tivoli Palace. This was originally built as a Dutch consul in Portugal back in 1787. After years of neglect, it was eventually turned into a hotel, which is what it is today. This Gothic palace rising out from the lush forest is called Quinta de Regalera. Here, we bought the tickets, we walked through this path, and we reached this tower here. Walking from the stables to this tower it took us less than a minute, <laughs> okay? It was very quick. If you walk the same direction to the other side over there, it's also a minute, okay? So it's just, you, you can see that it's not as big as it seems, it just has a lot of layers. For example, if you look at this palace here, down there. The palace is right next to the exit, the only exit in the property, okay? So, like I said, I'm gonna be with you sometime. I will explain all of the history, take you all the way to the top of the park, here to the initiation well. When you enter the initiation well, you're, you're about to get initiated, okay? <laughs> With a map on hand, we explore the estate, and there's a lot to take in. Antonio Montero, a wealthy eccentric, bought this place. He was an etymologist with a great love for lyrical poetry and had a true passion for the natural sciences and dedicated many years of his life studying the insects of Brazil and Europe. This combination of interests mixed in with his spirituality as a Freemason gave rise to the magical Quinta de Regalera. Oh, wow. The initiation well is perhaps one of the most famous attractions in all of Sintra. It is believed that this well 
was used as part of the Knights Templar's initiation. The candidates would enter the initiation well blindfolded. Holding a sword close to their heart, they would descend nine flights of stairs, a number that represents the nine founders of the Templar Order. Once reaching the bottom part of the well, the candidate would walk into a dark labyrinth where they would symbolically and literally find their way up towards the light. If they were able to make through the well tower and into the sunlight, they would walk across the stones in water to reach the chapel, where they would then be welcomed into the Brotherhood. This place is quite eccentric. Um, the guy just told us that inside that well, um, the walls are actually coral reefs that were taken from, you know, under the sea and being plastered on the, on the wall because the, the owner, Antonio, found that the actual stone, it's not um, exciting enough. So this whole project, it's like, this whole area is like a vanity project for the rich owner. And, you know, many years later, here we are <laughs> exploring his vanity project. Hello! Ledo! Who are you, Ledo? Hello! <laughs> this is weird. Bye, Leda. See you later. Although the forecast in Lisbon is sunny today, Sintra, which is only about 25 kilometers away, has its own climate, being on top of the mountain and surrounded by forest. It's sunny one minute and then you blink and then it's raining all of a sudden. That's the Moorish castle there. That there. Yeah, there. Right there. And that's the Pena Palace. Where is it? That there is the Pena Palace. <laughs> So we went inside the chapel and prayed for the sun to show up, and it worked! <laughs> So guys, that's um, Quinta de Regalera. Hopefully that's how you pronounce it. It is weirdly wonderful. <laughs> it's full of eccentric stuff. It's beautiful, especially when the sun is out. You know when you're into your Instagram? This is really, you need to come here. <laughs> Before lunch, our guide drove us through the narrow streets of Sintra until we arrived at the local restaurant where we had the most incredible meal. After lunch, we drove through what looks like a jungle until we got to our last stop of the tour, which is the Pena Palace. Pena Palace used to be a monastery until King Consort Ferdinand II decided to acquire the monastery and the surrounding land to build a summer residence for the royal family.
It looks very colorful and quirky, and yes, beautiful. And as you know, I'm always honest with how I feel about visiting a tourist site. And this one? Hmm, this one is definitely not for me. Apart from the crowd of tourists, it just feels like you're in a theme park pretending to be a real castle. I know it's a real castle, but there's something off about it, but I just can't put my fingers on what it is. It doesn't have the wow factor, and considering that we queued for a while to get tickets, I don't think this is worth all the trouble. This is our ride the whole day. <laughs> After our guided tour, we meet up with Sander's good friend, Renato, who very kindly drove us around to see other interesting places around the area. So we've just finished our tour in Sintra and now we're in Cabo de Roca, which is apparently the most westerly point in continental Europe. So we are now in Cascades, which is apparently where rich people live. So <laughs> we, will, we will stand out like a sore thumb here. <laughs> and we're just going towards the town centre and um, explore it a bit. We're heading to the Algarve next, so I will see you there. Kita kids, or as they say in Portugal, eta próxima!